a city within a park. That's the motto of Toronto's Parks, Forestry and Recreation Division. So, let's have a look at some of them. Toronto has almost 1,500 parks. Don't worry, we're only going to look at a few of them in this video. There are big ones, little ones, grassy ones, treed ones, mostly paved ones. There are parks with baseball diamonds, soccer fields, recreational equipment. Let's start out with one just a couple of blocks south of here. I'm in Alexander Muir Memorial Gardens on Young Street, a couple of blocks south of Lawrence. These gardens are named in honor of the composer of the Maple Leaf Forever. This is not the original location of the gardens. They used to be farther south on Young Street, on the other side, across from Mount Pleasant Cemetery, where Alexander Muir is buried. They were moved here in the early 1950s to make way for the Davisville subway yard. In commemoration of the original location of these gardens, the tunnel portal at the south end of the Davisville yard is named the Muir Portal. Speaking of the subway, I'm going to hop on it. Meet me downtown. Welcome to Bursey Park. No, bring that back up. There's not universal agreement on how to pronounce William Bursey's name. Although that probably shouldn't be surprising. He didn't always spell it the same way, and it wasn't even his name to begin with. It was his wife's name, which he took when he married her. Anyway, if you're from the area, why don't you leave me a comment and let me know how you and your neighbors pronounce it. In the background is the lovely Trompe l'Oeil mural on the back of the Goodrum building, better known as the Flatiron building. Yes, that's the same Goodrum family as the Goodrum and Wurtz Distillery Complex, now known as the Distillery District. Bursey Park is well known for its fountain with dog statues. There are 27 dogs, all staring at a bone atop the center of the fountain. But as a cat person, I have to point out that there are cats here, too. This kitty is perched at the edge of the fountain and isn't looking at the bone. It's looking at these two birds on a lamppost. There's a second cat sitting on this electrical box, facing away from the park. And here we have a statue of the Bursey family. Hmm, may not be exactly as illustrated. All right, let's move along. This is Sugar Beach on the eastern side of the central waterfront. Now, it's not a real beach, and this is not sugar. It's named for the sugar refinery behind me across the slip. Toronto has another artificial beach park on the western side of the central waterfront. Let's go visit that now. And here we are in HTO Park. There's an artificial beach here too, at least in this half of the park. There's another half of the park over there. And that's right here, HTO Park West. If we continue west, we come to the Toronto Music Garden, which was partly designed by world-renowned cellist Yo-Yo Ma. Continuing west, we come to Ireland Park next to the old Canada malting silos. This park commemorates the tens of thousands of people who came to Toronto to escape the Irish potato famine. Continuing west, we reach Little Norway Park, which commemorates the time during the Second World War when the Royal Norwegian Air Force used this area as a training base while they were in exile from their own country. Another short walk to the west, and we reach Stadium Road Park, which not surprisingly is on Stadium Road. Now, there's no stadium here, not now, but there used to be. This is the former site of the Maple Leaf Stadium, which sort of replaced the second Hanlon's Point Stadium, which was built after the first Hanlon's Point Stadium burned down. For the Monty Python fans out there, no, it did not fall over or sink into a swamp. And now I'm going to turn the camera around and show you where those stadiums were located. Yes, that's Billy Bishop Toronto City Airport, commonly known as simply the Island Airport. The airport is located at Hanlon's Point, so it's not surprising that's where the Hanlon's Point stadiums were. The second Hanlon's Point stadium was the location where Babe Ruth hit his first home run as a professional ball player. 
and since we're looking at the islands, let's hop on a ferry and head over. No, not the airport ferry on the left side of this video. That ferry also made an appearance in my video on the changes to Toronto shoreline. There's a magic link to that video up in the corner, and I'll put a link in the description below so you can find it when you're finished watching this video. We'll take the Centre Island Ferry. Strangely, the Centre Island Ferry doesn't go to Centre Island. It goes to Middle Island. Now, I know those two words are synonyms, but they're two different islands. It probably doesn't help that the Centreville Amusement Park is also on Middle Island, not Centre Island. Want some more? Okay. Center Island is not in the center of the islands. It wraps around the southern edge of all the other islands. Had enough? No? Okay. From the city ferry terminal, there's another ferry that goes to Ward's Island. But there is no island called Ward's Island. It's just the eastern end of Center Island. There's a third ferry going from that terminal that is more accurately named. It goes to Hanlon's Point. We won't be filming there, there's a nude beach at Hanlon's Point, and I don't think the naked people want to be on video. All right, let's go off and have a look at a haunted lighthouse. This is the Gibraltar Point Lighthouse. It's said to be haunted by the ghost of one of its lighthouse keepers who was murdered in 1815. It's an unsolved murder. Two soldiers from Fort York were tried for the murder, but they were acquitted. I mentioned Hanlon's Point earlier. It's just over that way. Hanlon's Island is just over that way. Hanlon's Point is not on Hanlon's Island. It's on Center Island. But the two are named for the Hanlon family, who used to run a hotel and other businesses on Hanlon's Point. One member of the family, Ned Hanlon, was a world champion rower five years in a row. Get it? In a row? OK. Rowing is an Olympic sport, so for our next stop, let's head over to Olympic Island. Olympic Island is a great place to get a view of the city skyline. Here's a picture at night. It's also a really convenient location because it's just a short walk from the ferry dock. Hey, just a short walk from the ferry dock. That's catchy. If you're going to be coming here at night to get some pictures of the skyline, a word to the wise, you'll want insect repellent. And now I'll get out of the way. If you've enjoyed this view and this video, you know what to do. Like and subscribe. <laughs>